Live and on demand from the WNY News Now studios in downtown Jamestown, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now on this Wednesday. I'm Justin Gould. And I'm Matt Hummel. Happening now, Lakewood's Ruby Tuesday was headed by the Chautauqua County Health Department months before closing what the violations were coming up. Plus, a Falconer man is accused of illegally burning a television. But first, Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter is standing by with a first look at our weather. Hey, Dakota. Hey, Justin and Matt. And speaking about that, I'm actually very interested to hear about that guy who burned a television. I'm very interested to hear that. Uh, here Allegedly is the. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jay? Allegedly burned a television. <laughs> okay. Allegedly. I want to hear that, so I'll be tuning in very closely. Uh, here's a live look coming from uh, the Mill Creek Mall in downtown Erie. You can see the clouds overhead, and look at the wind at west at 12. The wind is up today, and the temperature is doing something different. It's actually going the opposite direction. You can see we had a little bit of rain this morning. This is the rain that came through. It's all hightailed out to the east, and the remainder of the afternoon should be mainly dry. 76 was the high yesterday. 66 uh, was the low this morning, and again, there's the record for today of 87 uh, set back in 1991 0.03 inches of rain officially gauged at the airport north of the city here's what's the uh, here's what the temperature is doing it's falling through the day will fall actually through the mid 60s partial sunshine through the afternoon but the remainder of the afternoon should be dry but it's going to be feeling like fall as we head into the weekend we'll talk about it in a few minutes back to you jay Alrighty, Dakota, thank you very much. Our top story, Lakewood's Ruby Tuesday restaurant was cited for several critical violations by the Chautauqua County Health Department just months before its closure. The Chautauqua County Department of Health's Food Service Inspection List notes several critical violations in late December 2018 where the health inspector reportedly found dirty kitchen conditions, broken equipment, and in inadequately heated food. Now, during the routine inspection, officials say they found the kitchen sink's cold handle was broken and employees had to use a tool to turn it on and off. The official also reported there was grease spilled on the floor and no disposable towels were available to staff. Now, the health inspector additionally reported that the cold temperatures on the buffet were incorrect. Following their inspection, a batch of potato salad, a pico, and cold slaw had to be discarded. Health officials also found that Parmesan cheese sauce was not heated to the correct temperature. On Tuesday, Ruby Tuesday closed their doors, leaving customers only with a note. WNY News now reached out to the County Health Department seeking additional information. The report was posted on their website. A request for comment from Ruby Tuesday's corporate office was left unreturned. A Falconer man allegedly burnt a TV illegally near the rear of an apartment in the village of Falconer last week. Ellicott police say they were conducting a routine patrol on Friday morning when they discovered an abundance of black smoke coming from the rear of an apartment building. 53-year-old Randall Cross was issued an appearance ticket for illegal open burning. Police say he is scheduled to appear in the town of Ellicott Court at a later date. And the Cataraucus County Sheriff's Office is warning residents about a scam that Scam artists are reportedly calling from Boston, New York, claiming to be from the Olean General Hospital. Deputies say the number shows on caller ID. In addition, they say the people claim that they've been updating their records and will ask for personal information, including social security numbers and bank routing numbers. Deputies are telling people not to release any of this information or return any calls to the number. If a similar call is received, residents are encouraged to contact their local police agency. Now, this is the second case of scammers in the past month that have been reported in Cataraucus County. And New York State is now requiring football teams and coaches to make parents more aware of concussion risks when deciding whether to take up sport. Governor Andrew Cuomo signed legislation yesterday requiring tackle football programs to provide the parents or guardians with informational packets regarding concussions and subconcussive blows and the injuries that may result from receiving such blows. 
of the program affected by this new law include any practice, game, or other activity in which children participate in tackle football and which is organized by a school, league, or other adult-run organization. And the required informational packets on concussions and subconcussive blows must be available free of charge on the organization's website. Section 6 Athletics, a governing body for local high school sports here in western New York, has had concussion meetings for parent, players and parents at the scholastic levels for the past several years. Links Justin on the group's website explain what a concussion is and how to manage the injury. So it certainly seems like a lot of officials here mm -hmm. in our area talk about concussions. Mm -hmm. They follow the concussion mm -hmm. protocol to make sure that mm -hmm. you know everyone is safe but now certainly New York State wanting to make that more broad mm. across all of the state. Good Wednesday to all of you. Thanks so much for tuning in here on WNY News Now. And we've seen, unfortunately, high school players die nationwide yeah. from suffering from concussion-related injuries. Um, and it's certainly not something to laugh about. No. Um, and, and, and the thing is, uh, you know, f for me, looking at it, it seems like a lot of the students out there probably – sometimes have that stigma where they don't want a concussion because it means they have to stop playing for X number of yeah. time. Am I correct in thinking that? Well, you're very correct, and uh, I'll say this now because it was eighth grade, so how many years ago was that, six, seven? A lot, long time ago. Something that was like... a lot smaller, had a lot more hair. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I, uh, you know, I played modified soccer, and I'm pretty sure I got a mild concussion after banging my head with an opponent, and... I never said anything. Right, because you knew that would lead to yeah, because because that's um well that's when um, uh, everything started happening in the NFL. Remember right. when they started talking about right. concussions and uh, now at the time they didn't really know about CTE, but you know you saw football players they get fines and you had the concussion protocols right. and stuff. And I think one of the mm -hmm. biggest things for when it comes to local sports is. These kids are 12, 13, mm -hmm. 14 years old when they first really start getting into the tackle, if not younger. So when you have you know, a, a traumatic, traumatic head bump, mm. um, granted their gear is better now than it was years yeah. ago to try to protect that. But still, it's something to, to be mindful of. And, and I think one of the biggest you know, takeaways is that now parents you know, more than ever, and mm. coaches more than ever, you know, have and are stepping yes. up to yep. say, you know, hey, you got a blow to the head. Let's sit you down. Let's take mm. you. Let's, let's look at you. And rather than just, you know, a kid may be saying, hey, you know, I, I hit my head, which, you know, they may or may mm. not do. It, you know, it, it depends on the Absolutely. circumstances and the situation. Um, so hello to uh, Lori. Uh, hopefully you are doing well on this September 4th. She says Tim Hortons has started pumpkin spice today. So you know the fall's coming <laughs> when they break out those pumpkin spice. I, I do like pumpkin mm. spice season. It's a nice, mm -hmm. especially when it gets crisper, especially right. in the evening and the morning. Nice mm. time to just uh, cuddle up with a cup of joe. Henry, good afternoon to you. Uh, Renee has joined us. Uh, David is here. Uh, Donna is here. She says that she got food poisoning last July from the salad bar there at Ruby Tuesday. That's another one of our big stories that we've been following this week, trending with over a thousand shares on WNY News Now's um, platform. And yeah, the county health department, you know, served them with a number of violations. If you missed what we talked about, you can catch it at the end of this program or see the story right now on WNY News Now's mobile app. Just search WNY News Now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. But um, Matt, I mean, this is this is some pretty serious stuff. Um, you know, uh, food poisoning, you know, is not a new thing. We've seen that for several years. And we've seen that at a number of local restaurants. Mm -hmm. You know, when we see it in the comments here from people, it's, it's, it's so tricky. And the thing with that list, too, we have a link to the list. It's so very interesting to read over all of these restaurants here locally and what the violations have popped up. You would be surprised. Now, I will say some of them are, are pretty silly. I, I'm not going to lie looking through that list. I mean, some of them are so minor. Right. They, they just have to record it. Right. But, I mean, these alleged infractions here... They aren't so minor. No, uh, that's no. why they're called critical folks. Right, right, right. And that's why they, they mark them out and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, good good research by our uh, news team in finding that. Um, saying hello to Donna as well. Tony, 
Uh, Beth is here, Corey and Joe. Um, hopefully you are all having a good day. Um, coming up, a lot more local news. New York State has closed why they say uh, has closed a potentially dangerous gun loophole. What they say could have happened if the loophole was left open. But first, Walmart is changing its policies on selling ammunition. Dakota. And we'll take a live look at the HD News Now cam, partly to mostly sunny skies through the afternoon. We're perched at 68 right now, but look at that wind gust of 23 miles an hour. Temperatures falling through the afternoon, and it will feel like fall as we talk about it next as News Not New continues in a minute. Live and on demand, you're watching WNY News Now. Want weather now? Download the WNY News Now mobile app and stay up to date on severe weather alerts. Plus, anytime hazardous weather strikes, stick with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network that keeps you safe. You're all in a tornado warning, so now is the time to go to a safe place, small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. What are you waiting for? Download the WNY News Now mobile app today. It's free in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. And happening now, Walmart says it will stop selling handgun and short barrel rifle ammunition while requesting that customers not openly carry firearms in its stores, even where state law allows it. The announcement comes just days after a mass shooting claimed seven lives in Texas and follows back-to-back -back shootings last month, one of them at a Walmart store in Texas. The uh, Now, the Bentonville, Arkansas-based discount s retailer says it will stop selling handgun ammunition as well as short barrel rifle ammunition, such as the .223 caliber and the .556 caliber used in military-style weapons after it runs out of current inventory. It will also be discontinuing handgun sales in Alaska, now, Walmart stopped selling handguns in the mid-1990s with the exception of Alaska. The latest move marks its complete exit from that business and allows it to focus on hunting rifles and related ammunition only. The United States Governor Andrew Cuomo signed legislation, meanwhile, yesterday, closing a loophole that he said could have allowed a dangerously mentally ill person to obtain a firearm license. Cuomo says that law enforcement agencies now have greater access to records of those seeking a firearm license in New York. The previous system did not prevent mentally ill people who have not been involuntarily committed from applying for a firearm license in the state. It also allowed those who reside in New York but still have a permanent address in another state to attempt to purchase a license. National Instant Criminal Background Check System only flags people who have been involuntarily committed. The governor's office says that this legislation closes that loophole. Well, while there is some relief today on the Florida coast, despite heavy rains, the Carolinas are now on heightened alert. Nadia Romeo continues our coverage in Jacksonville, Florida, with the latest on where Hurricane Dorian may be headed. Some communities along the Florida coast beginning to breathe a little easier as Hurricane Dorian lashes them with wind and rain, but passes without making landfall. You know, we've been under mandatory evacuation for days. We look like we're going to take a, a big hit, and uh, every track is, that we've seen since then has been more encouraging. But as the storm moves north, Georgia, the Carolinas, and southern Virginia have their guard up. Dorian is picking up speed and expanding, which means greater the potential for dangerous storm surge and flooding. Storm surge is more prone to large hurricanes, so the threat of a, uh, a very, very severe storm surge along the South Carolina coast is growing uh, larger at this point. 
Meanwhile, in the Bahamas, they are facing the grim after effects of the strongest hurricane to ever hit the island nation. The death toll is rising. We were doing all right until the water kept coming up. Several areas in the Bahamas remain underwater. I want to assure and inform the Bahamian population that we can expect more death to be recorded. All right, Nadia, thank you. Now, nearly 100 dogs in the Bahamas have a roof over their head thanks to a kind-hearted woman there. Sella Phyllis is sheltering 97 dogs inside her Nassau home during the storm. Now, according to a Facebook post from Phyllis, 79 of the dogs are from are now in her master bedroom. She runs a shelter which lost power and flooded out due to the hurricane. However, she claims the dog stayed relatively calm during the storm and appear to be doing well. Definitely good news, Justin. Now, Facebook says it will offer facial recognition features to all of its users, but it says it will keep the capabilities turned off by default. Users will have to specifically turn the capability on. The company says a forthcoming alert will be sent explaining the feature to users and allowing them to opt in. When it, go lives, when it goes live, the feature will be automatically turned off if a user failed to respond to the alert. The company first offered the feature to some users in late 2017 by allowing them to decide broadly whether or not facial recognition was used in their Facebook experience. With the announcement on Tuesday, Facebook is expanding this option to all users. Hmm, it's nice that they do have that security mm -hmm. feature in there where you don't necessarily have to opt into it. I'm, I'm really torn on facial, facial rec. Um, I do have an iPhone 10, and I tell you I love the facial rec because mm -hmm. if I'm busy or whatever and I don't get to touch my phone and I get a notification, it unlocked, like it just unlocked it. Um, and the thing is... You could use that to get into, say, mm -hmm. you know, Facebook or your banking app mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how many people opt into Absolutely. it. I mean, I've always kind of been a I yeah. I'm it's not. tough. It's I'm tough. Not. I love I love it on my iPhone. Um, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. It's well, a no not, for you. I sent the iPhone. I would agree with. Yeah, but but once they, they have it somewhere, they have it everywhere. Well, that's true. See, that's, that I don't was know. my thinking, and, and the, especially with Facebook and everything that's happened. Right, they already have all of our data. Oh. I mean, they're listening to us right now. Oh well. Hello. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. You know what? What are you gonna do? Yeah. It, I, I, it is Big Brother. They are here. It is very much a thing. It's just whether or not you're comfortable with that level of, yeah. of information. I, I don't know. I like the facial rec. I think the little emoji characters that, that you have on, on there are, are cute. I don't really have any other practical use for it. I probably didn't have to get an iPhone 10, but I did. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. Okay. But I mean, Matt, you're, you have an 8 plus? Yeah, uh, 7 plus. 7 plus. Probably works just fine still. Oh, well, it's going to have to for a while, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Matt's not getting a phone anytime soon. No. Well, you could, but... Um, either way, let us know what you think in the comments before. Are you for the facial rec or are you not for the facial rec? Um, hello to David. Hopefully you're having a good day out there. Thanks so much uh, for tuning in. Um, hello to uh, Justin. Justin, Justin as Justin. well. Mm -hmm. Thank you for tuning in. Donna, good to see you as well. Andrew, thanks for tuning in. Heather and um, Marianne, thank you so much for tuning in here on the broadcast. A lot of people are talking about, you know, Big Bad, Dorian, and certainly it did cause a lot of devastation there um, in parts of the South. So, you know, certainly, you know, our thoughts and prayers go out with uh, everybody who is affected and, you know, those who are still sitting in the storm's path. Coming up next, Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. He's here with a look at our local weather forecast. And later on, details on a 5K that Panama Central School will host as News Now continues. Now open in downtown Jamestown, Pearl City Hops, Restaurant and Tavern. I have some real old-timey dishes on there that I'm just giving new life to. Like there's a shepherd's pie on there that's going to have some bison in it, you know, real thick hearty gravy. Um, then I'm also doing beer flights. We're pairing it with a set of sliders, a set of tacos, and a set of mini rolls. So everything's going to have its own 
pair so you can get a taste of a little bit of everything and all the beers. We don't want to be known as the restaurant in the hotel. We want to be known as Pearl City Hops. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. First Defense Weather, the Southern Tier's only live and local weather source. Now, here's Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. You know, it's true that, you know, if you don't, you know, you know, if you don't have anything to hide, who cares? But I still like the little bit of privacy I have left. Hey, the HD News Now Cam caught this last night. Do you know what this is? The moon! The HD News Now Cam caught this uh, just a little bit before the sunset time last night. And uh, so that was a great thing to see. And uh, so that's one of the reasons why we love the News Now Cam. And uh, speaking about to Hurricane Dorian, it's right here. You can see the center of circulation now. It has started to move away uh, from the Bahamas, which is good news. And it actually looks a lot better on the satellite imagery. So here it is here. You can see the eye started to really broaden out and the circulation is becoming a little bit more bigger. Just because the circulation is bigger does not necessarily mean that this thing is strengthening. It's actually gone down uh, right now. The winds are down to 105 uh, miles per hour. But again, the big thing with this is definitely going to be uh, the potential for storm uh, for a storm surge flooding. So uh, here's just a neat little graphic we threw together to talk about the storm surge flooding. As this rides up along the coast, there's going to be the potential for the waves crashing ashore uh, and you'll get the larger chance for storm surge. So talking about the storm surge, what exactly is it? Well, it's essentially when large waves uh, that's, that's essentially kicked up from tropical systems cause the water level to rise and the water moves inland uh, on, uh, on shore and you can see what happens. It basically sweeps things away that are near the coastline. Tomorrow starts the first day of school for Jamestown and most schools around the southern tier. So this is what you can expect. Dry and cool day with a temperature around 72 degrees. Not too bad, not too cool, but not too hot either, and the humidity won't be in play either. Uh, next big thing is what's going on right now. We have a cold front that is just about to move through the area, and when this cold front moves through, the temperatures are going to respond along with that, but you can see where the cloud cover is coming from. You can see the clouds are actually coming from the north and west, so when we have a northwest wind component, you know it's going to be hard to clear out the cloud cover around here. So we'll call today partly sunny, but again, you can see the rain that moved through pretty much uh, earlier today. That's all high temperature out of here and the day should be mainly dry. We'll show you future scan here. You can see the model does show the idea of maybe a couple little isolated showers through the afternoon. It's not out of the question that could happen, but the majority of the day will be dry, but temperatures actually go the opposite direction. We'll actually end the day uh, possibly into the lower uh, 60s, clear tonight, and then a dry day coming up on Thursday. Zone by zone, we'll start at the eastern areas first. Temperatures here, temperatures what are you doing, man? You're going the opposite way. Uh, this is where we're going to end the day here, probably around 66 around Jamestown, maybe 65 around Randolph. But the day should be mainly dry, at least uh, through the most part. Uh, as we take a look at uh, the lakeshore areas here, temperatures here into the upper 60s here. Temps fall through the day, but look at the wind. West, 10 to 25 miles per hour. Next seven days of your life coming up. And 72 tomorrow, 72 also on Friday. Chance for an afternoon shower, but again, the day should be mainly dry as well. And break out the rakes, the pumpkin spice, all that stuff. It's going to feel like fall as we head into the weekend. Maybe a chance for a shower on Saturday. Otherwise, Sunday, Monday through Tuesday, mainly dry. Sports is next. Don't go away. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. WNY Sports Now is powered by Phone Zone of Jamestown. With the largest inventory around, we buy and sell our own merchandise at a price that can't be beat. Have a broken screen? We'll fix it. Learn more at phonezoneshop.com. Happy Hump Day, sports fans, and welcome back to WNY News Now. I'm Norm Rodriguez with a look at sports. Tomorrow evening with a 6 o'clock start, the JCC Jayhawks volleyball team will be on the road for a conference game against Niagara County Community College. The volleyball team last played their games in the Owens Classic in Perrysburg, Ohio last Sunday, in which the Jayhawks won their first game three sets to none versus Schoolcraft College and losing their second game three sets to none against McHenry County College. The JCC volleyball team is currently 2-4 thus far in the 2019 season. 
In approximately one week's time on September 12th, the Buffalo Sabres will be having their training camp. Three training camp rounds will be open to the public, with the dates being September 15th and September 26th and 27th. Buffalo's training camp will run from September 12th until September 28th. The Sabres will open up their preseason against the Pittsburgh Penguins on September 16th and will also be on the road versus them in their season opener on October 3rd. This afternoon with a 105 first pitch, the New York Mets will close out their three-game road series versus the Washington Nationals. Losing 11-10 on Tuesday, the Mets are in fourth in the NL East at 70-68 and, and are also five games back for the final NL wildcard spot. Meanwhile, Washington is in second place in the same division with a record of 78-59 and, and are currently holding one of the NL wildcard playoff spots. Zach Wheeler is inked as the Mets starter against Anibal Sanchez. The game will be televised on Sportsnet New York. That's it for sports today. Justin and Matt, back to you. All right, Norm, thank you very much. Panama Central School will be hosting a 5K color run and walk to raise money for the 7th and 8th grade field trip to this nation, to our nation's capital. Early registration for the run costs $25 per person and is due on Thursday, September 19th. Now, runners will also receive a shirt and color packet as part of the registration cost. Officials say the white late well wait man i don't know what it is about these stories start well, the story over we need a do-over <laughs> can i have a mulligan yeah. they say well late registration will be accepted on the day up to the event there is no guarantee of a shirt or color packet for those who register late it also costs thirty dollars now runners will line up on saturday october 5th at Panama Central School, just before 9 a.m., the race will take place in stages every 20 minutes until all participants have left the course. Online registration is open now. Forms can also be obtained by me emailing um, school officials or by calling the school. We have full list of that right now on our web story at WNYNewsNow.com. Guys, the field trip is expected to take place next May. Ah, uh, Washington, D.C. Yeah, that was a fun trip. Lots of history. I know mm. Matt and I are both really big mm. po political science buffs and history buffs. Um, we would totally tag along oh, to that yeah. if, if you'd let us. Um, <laughs> Dakota. chaperones. Right. Da <laughs> yeah, there you go. W yeah. Dakota, are you, I don't. I know you're. You don't usually like to get too involved in politics. Yeah. that's kind of. Yeah, you, he's always told yeah, us. Yeah, we're not going to go down that road. He, but, he likes to stick to science. But but I will say this. Uh -huh. You know, I kind of wish when I was in school we did something like that because anytime we did fundraising for anything, we had to sell candy, and nobody bought candy from me because nobody liked me. So I never could buy anybody. Oh, I mean, if I would have known you. I, I could bought only. Candy? I mean, I could only get some members of my family to buy candy, and even that was a little. Mm. I would have. So <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know. If I ever wanted to go on a field trip or something, it came out of my family's own pocket. Yeah. Nobody you, bought candy for you, me. You so. know what road? Whatever. You know what road that you can access? So the Yellow Brick Road. Yeah, that too. What other road? <laughs> Do you know the road? Uh, what are we looking at down the road? Does the that... seven day forecast. Yeah. Yes. The road so to the seven day forecast. So let's so let's take a look at that. But first of all, I wanted to start off with this again. This is so cool that we were able to Ooh, capture the moon like on that? the news now. Cam. That's my screenshot. Yeah. So Jay actually <laughs> sent this to me last night, and I mean it was so good I had to put it in the show. So here comes the seven day, and uh, back to school for Jamestown and most schools around the area tomorrow. Looking nice. Friday, maybe a chance for an isolated shower in the afternoon, but mainly dry. But look at that. Temperatures fall into the upper to mid-60s over the weekend, and it looks like we stay cool until early next week. All right, Dakota, thank you. Yeah, kiddos back to school uh, in just a couple of days' time. You know, maybe we should ask the people, Dakota. We, we kind of had a little bit of an argument, and we've been having this argument, you and I, for a long time. We always kind of, I'm a big proponent of having the HD News Now oh, yeah. pointed downward, mm -hmm. so I'm always yeah. telling our producers to move it downward. I want to see the people on the street. Oh, right. I've heard this, yeah. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it's a thing. Dakota likes upward, and obviously we catch beautiful shots like that. Right. So there's good benefits to both. What Isn't it a people? great thing? Isn't it a great thing we left the camera yeah, pointed up at the sky last night, people? I agree. But right now they're, <laughs> they're, they're ripping apart the street down there right now. So. Oh, really? Yeah. So I like to look at that. I don't know. I mean, look at the HDMI. It's up. We wouldn't know. Right? 
There's beautiful clouds for you. Yeah, hmm. beautiful clouds. What are you gonna do? Let us know what you think. Where do you want the camera pointed? Do you want it downward? Do you like it upward? Do you what? What's your what's your take on it? Let us know or, in the comments. Or or if somebody could donate below. us a new camera, we could have one pointed up and one there pointed down. There you go. That's a good idea. And it looks like they're moving it right now for us. Thank you guys. There, yeah. See, downward, upward. The world may never know. <laughs> We're back tomorrow. Who's on that joystick?